Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. This is probably the most important video when you're dealing with the FEMA reductive system because it shows the complex interrelationship between all the hormones involved and then also how critical timing is when it comes to the ovarian and uterine cycle. So very, very important. So first thing we're going to show here is just the fact that we've, we've had to make the follicle. Remember, the follicle is going to be where the oocyte, the female gamete, is stored, but the follicle will also become a temporary endocrine organ in just a moment. So you'll see that um, follicles develop. The process is called folliculogenesis we covered in a separate video. Many of these follicles will develop, but one's going to win. So we're just, we're just starting with the fact that we have one perfect single tertiary follicle, and then now we're going to jump in here. So we're just, just going to go down. We're gonna, so I won't go in order here, but I just want to talk about how all these are, are related, timing critically important. So the ovarian cycle you see during the follicular phase of development, first the key thing to remember is it's dominated by estrogen. So that's the first important thing to note there. The first half of the ovarian cycle is dominated by estrogen. Then we have the luteal phase. The second half is dominated by progesterone. So that during the follicular phase, the follicle is developing. So this follicle is preparing to release a fully functional egg. And that's what's going to be happening during the follicular phase. Pretty good name for it, right? Then we have ovulation. The key thing to note here in the middle with ovulation is the spike in luteinizing hormone. These, it's called the LH surge or luteinizing hormone surge is what leads to ovulation. So, so it's like it switches gears. So the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle is dominated by estrogen. Then lutein, this huge spike in luteinizing hormone leads to ovulation, but also leads to what's called luteinization, which is why the second half is called the luteal phase, which is now dominated by progesterone. So very important things there. Follicular phase dominated by estrogen. Ovulation occurs because of a huge spike or surge in luteinizing hormone. The luteal phase dominated by progesterone. So we see, so the follicle has been released from the ovary and ovulation is called the oocyte to be released. There you see the corpus luteum. Remember the corpus luteum is a temporary endocrine structure. It takes the theca and granulosa cells from this, this beautiful follicle and it, and it turns into a factory making the female sex hormones, especially progesterone. As long as the corpus, corpus luteum is around, progesterone levels will stay elevated. 10 to 12 days later though, if this egg has not been fertilized, the corpus luteum will break down and become the corpus alpha cans going from being yellowish to whitish and then it'll be de degraded which will which will signal to the body that there's not going to be a pregnancy this month and that's why we're going to see these changes later so that's the the phases of the ovarian cycle then we have the menstrual cycle so timing along with it and while this month's follicle is developing we have menses during the the uterine cycle last month's uterine lining is being sloughed off because there wasn't a pregnancy last month or else we wouldn't be making a new follicle this month so last month's uterine lining is sloughed off so we can grow a new one. So menses or the loss of last month's functional layer of the uterus is the start of the uterine cycle or the menstrual cycle. So that's menses. The proliferative phase is also under the control of estrogen. So as long as we're in this environment full of estrogen, the, the new functional layer for this month's uterine lining will start to develop and thicken. Then you see at ovulation, as we switch to um, a progesterone dominated system, now we're going to see what's called the secretory phase of the uterine cycle. So the uterine lining gets thicker and thicker. It starts to produce um, thicky glandular secretions, releases food for hoping that this fertilized egg comes along, right? So if that oocyte was fertilized, it'll happen somewhere in the uterine tube and uh, probably right near the middle. And then it's going to be a, a zygote and then two cells and four cells and eight cells. If this cluster of cells reaches this uter uterine lining, then it's going to be nice and thick and inviting. And it's going to be sticky enough to grab it and it's going to have the food to feed it. That's why the two cycles have to be timed together. You can have the perfect egg, but no uterine lining for it. You can have the perfect uterine lining, but, but no egg. So the timing and the connection of the ovarian and uter uterine cycles are very, very important. So if there's pregnancy, the secretary phase, so the, the progesterone levels will stay elevated from signals from your body and you'll continue to feed this um, this um, embryo and into the fetus if not there's no reason to keep this month's uterine lining along or, or around, so the drop in sex hormones, especially progesterone, will cause the, the functional layer to slough off, and then we're back at the beginning. We're menstruating last month's uterine lining off while producing the next follicle for, for, the, for the next um, ovulation. 
Uh, looking at the hormones, so you see the pituitary hormone levels. The key thing to note there is just that the uh, follicle-stimulating hormone is, is elevated higher than luteinizing hormone in the first half, which is why it's called follicle-stimulating hormone and why it's the follicular phase. The huge spike in luteinizing hormone is what leads to ovulation, and then we have the switching, where now luteinizing hormone is going to primarily be elevated and progesterone is going to be dominant. The ovarian hormones there, um, you see that, again, during the follicular phase, estrogen is going to be dominant. You see it really start to climb once this one fo dominant follicle is taken over, and then, then it flip-flops the second half of the ovarian cycle and, and uterine cycle, dominated by progesterone. Um, so we talked about menses. That would, that's a, generally a process that takes somewhere between two and seven days, but the cycles are, if everything's working perfectly, the cycle should take 28 days total, and I think I've covered all that. The last thing to note here, what else should we say? Uh, the temperature stuff, that's pretty cool. So if you're, if you're trying to figure out when you ovulate, you can look at the, you can keep a calendar and look at, look at the length of menstrual cycles and these types of things. But one of the way you can do it is to monitor your core body temperature because these fluctuations in hormones will change your core body temperature. So during the follicular phase, the first half here, when estrogen is dominant, your resting body temperature is going to be about half a degree, maybe 0.3 degrees Celsius, about half degree Fahrenheit, lower than in the luteal phase. So the so the first half of the so when you when, then you're going to see the uh, during ovulation the body temperature is going to drop and then it's going to be to climb so you're going to see an even more noticeable climb so you're going to see a, a lower temperature in the in the follicular phase of the ovarian cycle you're going to see it drop during ovulation and then it's going to peak which that elevation in temperature is going to be even more noticeable so if you if you keep a calendar and you're doing this you can actually predict when you when you ovulate based on core body temperature that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's that we've covered the ovarian cycle and all the things happening there. We've covered the uterine cycle and the hormones involved. The last thing to just one last reminder, if there's a pregnancy, then these hormone levels are going to stay elevated and you're not going to slip off the uterus. And also you're not going to make another uh, follicle for next month. There's no reason to because you're already pregnant. If there is not a pregnancy, then you'll slough off the functional layer of the uterus and you'll get ready to start again and try again next month. So that is very important. I'd watched this video a few times. The interplay between the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle and all the hormones involved. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.